All right, we'll go ahead and get started. For those of you who don't know, you are in the STEM class, and you are about to hear the smooth jazz. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, speaker Patty Reeves uh, teaching us how to make your website talk, how to use WordPress to power an Alexa skill. It's pretty cool. Take it away, Patty. Thank you, Claudia. Hi. Yay! All right. Um, I know we've had some internet issues, so I'm really hoping I don't jinx myself because what I have planned for you today is we're going to go from zero to hello world making an Alexa skill. So who here has an Alexa device? Cool. Who here has made a skill before? Ooh. Who here has any interest in making a skill? Oh, great. So who am I? I'm Patty Reeves. Uh, I am very new to Arizona. I moved here a year ago, and this is my first WordCamp Phoenix. Uh, yay. Um, I am super nervous because it is way bigger than WordCamp Maine. <laughs> which is where I'm from. Um, I am a senior user and experience developer, developer at Alley Interactive. We are a web development agency. Uh, we're a WordPress VIP partner. We often work with large publishers and nonprofits to bring their business online. Um, I am a contributor to Voice WP. I can say that as of yesterday. I have my pull request merged. Um, but I really am a novice Alexa skill developer. I pitched this talk in November, and at that point I was uh, a little bit farther than where I'm gonna take you guys today, but I still feel like I have a lot to learn. So I hope you came with your questions. I don't know how many of them I can answer, um, but I'm really excited about the potential of this technology, and I feel like in working with it, it's like gonna be like the smartphones of the next decade where, you know, 10 years ago we were talking about making our websites mobile ready and mobile first and responsive and do they work on phones? And that's like a ridiculous question in 2019. And I think that in a couple years from now we're gonna talk about like, is your website multimodal? Like, is it gonna um, work with text-to-speech? Is it gonna work on someone's refrigerator or in someone's car? And this is like, a way to get into that and learn about it. Um, but the technology is still really new and we're figuring out as we go along. So it's like a really exciting place to be right now. Um, so what is Voice WP? It's one of a couple different plugins out there that can create a link between your WordPress site and uh, Amazon Alexa services. Um, it was made by my former colleague, Tom Harrigan. There's his picture. Um, he was a partner at Alley Interactive, and just at the beginning of this year, he left with Alley's support. He's spinning up his own company around Voice WP. Um, so I'm going to show you guys how to use it. Uh, how I started making a skill is that in my work at Alley Interactive, um, we got a grant from the Knight Foundation to work with the Cooper Hewitt Smithsonian Design Museum to make an Alexa skill that allows a person using their Alexa device walk through a gallery at the museum. And it's gonna come out in April and it's really cool. And we used Voice WP to build it. So I went from like, uh, you know, I'm a user experience developer. I'm most often working with CSS and JavaScript and React and uh, Diving into the WordPress REST API, that was all pretty new to me. Um, but it surprised me how the thinking about user experience on a website and visual user experience, like all those kind of skills still translate to how you think about voice user experience design. And in some ways it's very, 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 very different because uh, voice is like a linear um, experience. like you have to hear me talking now to hear what I'm gonna talk about later. Whereas visual design, you can like, your eyes can go to like where they're interested in. Um, but 
Uh, I want to talk now about what makes a good Alexa skill if you have an idea. Um, here's three kind of points that I've been thinking about. Um, one is that it's something that uh, works really well in a hands-free environment. So if someone was driving a car or if someone was making dinner, that's a good time to have a voice experience where they don't necessarily have to see something going on. Um, another thing to think about is if it's part of a habit loop, like a person has an event in their through the course of their day and uh, your skill is like kicked off because of that event. So one skill that I have installed on my Alexa that I really like is for my dog. Um, there's three adults who live in my house, me, my husband, and my mother-in-law. And I have two pugs, and one pug is very fat. <laughs> and he's always scratching at the food bowl. And so we could, we could just feed him every time he scratches, and that's how he's getting fat. Um, and so I have a skill that like every time he scratches at the food bowl, I say, computer, because that's what I call my Alexa, um, is the dog hungry. And then Alexa will, has like, there's like a database that recorded whether or not I've asked that question the last six hours, or someone else has. And if it, the dog has not, if no one has asked Alexa in the last six hours, she says, yes, the dog is hungry, do you want to feed it now? And I say yes, and then I feed the dog. And then hopefully the next person that is going to feed the dog asks the Alexa if the dog is hungry. So that's an example of what I mean about like being part of a habit loop. Um, and then the third point is that it doesn't take a lot of back and forth. Um, so who here has tried to like make a flight reservation over the phone? Like, like those are like painful, awful experiences. Or like if you like call your credit card company and you have to talk to a computer for a long time. Um, that's like really where like the history of voice user interfaces are like in these phone systems. Um, and what we know from that research is that people are gonna be really impatient if they have to talk back and forth with the computer for a long time, unless you're really careful about making it like a delightful experience. So those are some things to keep in mind as you're thinking about what kind of skill would I like to make. Um, but that being said, this is not a talk about what makes a great voice user interface. And if you are interested in that topic, this is a really great book, Designing Voice User Interfaces by Kathy Pearl. And she goes into the history of voice user interfaces. And um, the first voice user interface was in the 50s, which is crazy, and like the technological constraints about it. So, this is my uh, chart, my simplistic chart that I made to illustrate how a skill works. So, um, the person talks to the Echo, and the Echo has some machine learning capabilities to translate uh, intent that the woman has into, um, uh, like a basically like a big array of um, different like requests that you can make. And so the Echo sends that request to Amazon um, and you have a developer dashboard where you're gonna like configure all the things about your skill. And then Amazon is going to send that request to an API on your server where you then can then interpret like what the user wants from that request and you can send it back to Amazon, and then, or you send the response you want the Echo to say back to Amazon, and then Amazon sends it back to the Echo, and then it goes to the user, which is why I am very scared about the Wi-Fi, because you can see it has to go through a lot of paths uh, between the Echo and you. But hopefully it will work today. Any questions so far? Cool. So what you need in order to get started is you need to have a Amazon developer account. It's free. It's the same one that you buy like dog biscuits with. Um, you need to have a WordPress installation with the required plugins, which I will get into, and a local development environment. And I use um, VVV, which stands for Varying Vagrant. Very, varying Vagrant Vagrants. Thank you, Jay. Um, which 
it like allows you to spin up a local development server. Um, so some of the stuff that I'm going to talk about today is specific to that. You might not need to do it if your local development setup is not set up that way. Um, but if you do, then this will be helpful. Uh, so the very first thing you're going to do is you're going to go to the Alexa developer console. And this is developer.alexa.com. Um, and don't worry, I have links to the slides and everything after this. Um, and when you do that, there's like all sorts of things you can do from developer.amazon.com. And you're going to go to the Alexa one. And you're going to create a skill. And if you haven't created any skills, this is what your dashboard looks like. And you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit one of those blue buttons. So there, the next page you get, um, at the very top, it's going to say, what's your skill name? And you can change this as many times as you want in the development process. But once you submit it to the Amazon store, that is the skill name. Um, pick the language as English. Then you can choose a model to add to your skill. And then in this example, we're just going to go custom. But if you're like curious and you want to play around with this, um, they have like some models that are created already that like kind of get you um, further along than nothing. Um, and then at the bottom, you can choose a method to host your skills backend resources. And we're going to pick self-hosted. OK, so once you've done that, uh, it's going to ask you for a template. And I believe these are new. Um, we're going to go ahead and start from scratch. So then, once you get to that point, you're going to load this page. And as you're developing a skill, you're going to get very, very familiar with this dashboard. This is like um, your console dashboard. And you can see, just like we specified the skill invocation name when we created it, you can change it right here. So some requirements for your skills invocation name is that it cannot have the word computer or Alexa or whatever the wake word is for a device. Is, who here know what a wake word is? Anyone want to shout it out? <laughs> like, what do you? What do you Alexa, computer, Echo, or Amazon. I personally use computer. Any Star Trek fans out there? <laughs> um, so you can't use that in your skill name. So in this example, I called the skill Hello World. So you would say computer open Hello World. And that would be how you get it to open. So once you have done all of that, you have a skill ID. This is important. We're going to copy it now. We're going to go set up a bunch of the other stuff, and we're going to come back to Amazon. Um, and the skill ID looks something like this, amz1.ask.skill.bunch of stuff. And the reason why you need this is because you're going to plug this skill ID into your WordPress installation later. Now, let's say you have, I'm developing this site on my computer, and then I want to like actually publish it into the world, you're going to need to create two skills like this, one for your local development environment and one for your production environment. And that's where that invocation name is important. You really want them to be different. They absolutely have to be different. If they are the same, you are going to have problems. They are not going to work like you expect them to. Um, I'm going to keep drilling this over and over again because it is a problem that I constantly run into um, when I'm not developing carefully. So we got the skill ID. Now let's play with WordPress. Uh, I have a repo. I will show you the link again at the end. Um, it's github.com Patty Reeves Hello Alexa. It is a WP content repo. So what that means is all of your plugins and your themes are in this repo. Um, this is what the plugins folder looks like. Um, it's gonna, you're going to need Voice WP as a plugin. You're going to need WordPress Field Manager as a plugin. And then I put the code for our Alexa skill in a plugin. This is what Hello Alexa looks like. 
Um, does anyone remember why I couldn't call it Hello Alexa in the invocation name? Because it was a trigger word, that's why it's Hello World. But I called it Hello Alexa here. So helloalexa.php is the plugin file, and then I have a package.json file. There's no JavaScript in this project, but the package.json is helpful because it's how I'm going to run my proxy service, which is going to help me give me some debugging information between working on my local computer and sending that information to Alexa. So uh, I'm going to go over, like, this is like the very bare bones what is in this plugin. I just like yanked it out of the, um, the construct method where uh, we're creating a field to save that Alexa skill ID. That's what um, the add action submenu hello Alexa settings is. So there's going to be a page hello Alexa settings. Um, and then I'm adding a REST API endpoint for my, basically, for the endpoint that we're going to send to Alexa. From there, oops, too fast, too far. This is what that package.json file looked like. So there was like really only two files in this plugin. And what is in here is I made an alias for Bespoken Tools, which is a really sweet service that will give me debugging information um, between my computer and Alexa so that I can see like what um, Amazon is sending to me and what my computer is sending to Amazon as I'm working on it. So if you run so once you so if you've checked this out and you've set up your WordPress site, you have to run npm install, and that's going to install this service. And then after you run npm install, um, sorry, getting ahead of myself, um, then you'll have it, and it'll be ready to go. OK, so everything's configured. Everything is checked out from Git. Uh, WordPress is running. I'm going to head to the WordPress admin. I'm going to paste in that Alexa skill ID um, into this field. And you can see here, just because of where I configured it, it's in under tools, hello Alexa settings, if you end up trying this at home later. Um, just a note, I tried configuring a skill where I saved the skill ID to like an environmental file that like, you know, you could have like one for your local and one for your dev, but I had a lot of problems with caching and it not working if it wasn't like in the database, so. Um, all right, so this is terminal, and I know it's very small, um, but I'm gonna try to kind of like walk through what the screen says. Um, what I did is from that plugins folder, I ran npm start, so that was the alias for the proxy server, and um, Bespoken Tools gives me a nice little message. Your public URL for accessing your local service is random URL. And then the URL for the dashboard is that second orange random URL. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to go to that dashboard and configure it. You only have to do this once. Um, this is what Bespoken Tools looks like. Uh, you hit that, hit um, create a new skill or action. And you fill out, you need to fill out the name of the skill and how you open the skill. So the wake word right there and in input. Um, to be honest with you, I've had a lot of things where I've like tweaked the invocation name or changed it. And I never had to update my settings for the skill after I did it once. So I don't know that they actually do map to anything in particular. <laughs> okay, so if you are using Vagrant or in VirtualBox, uh, you will need to make sure that you are proxying um, the port that you're proxying through is open. So this is a site's configuration file for the site I'm working on, where um, what it's doing is it's listening on that port, um, and it's saying, hey, server, Anytime something hits localhost 9994, please send it to this endpoint. Um, so you're going to save that. You're going to 
um, reload or restart the Nginx service, and you're not quite done yet. There is a couple more things you have to do in order to make it work. Because you also have to go into VirtualBox, and you have to, um, this is like a GIF, so it'll go back to where it was, but there's, you go to the network option, and then it's covered up right now, but uh, you go to port forwarding, and then you might have some port forwarding in there already, and you need to add one for the port that you're working on. So uh, another little gotcha is that if Vagrant goes down and you restart it again, all that port forwarding is going to go away. So you might want to edit the Vagrant file, and then it'll always be there. OK. So ports are forwarded. Plugin is set up. The skill ID is pasted in. We've created the skill on Amazon. Now we have to go back, and we have to put that endpoint that is on our local environment, and we need to put it in Amazon so it knows where to send the requests to. So you do that. We're back at that same console we saw when we first created the skill. And you're going to go to the build. We're in the build section, and we're going to endpoints, um, which is highlighted in blue on the left side of the screen. Um, we're going to choose HTTPS, which was the option we chose way back when we created it. Um, and you don't need to worry about filling out every region, because while you're developing, you just need to do the default region. But if you had a skill and you wanted to have you know, one skill for North America and one skill for Europe and one skill for Asia, you can do that, um, or version, different versions. And uh, what you're going to do is you're pasting in that proxy link that we got when we were in terminal earlier. So instead of saying to Alexa, like, visit, like, my IP, which would be like 172.56. blah, 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 which might change every time I like go to a different location. I have this proxy URL. It never changes. You never have to touch this again. Um, and you paste it in there. And it's always going to work when you're running the proxy from your computer. So next step. Um, I want to, this is, this is like the magic of Alexa. Um, it's the intent model. So what you have here, I'm too short. Um, there's a list of all of the things that you can tell your Alexa, um, and it's going to send that request to the server. And it gives you like a whole bunch for free. You don't have to configure them. The one that's like, cancel, I don't want to do that anymore. Help, Alexa, help me. Stop. Um, those all come, you don't have to configure them. But then you can create your own. So you could be like, uh, like in my feed the dog skill example, you'd have uh, like, Alexa, is the dog hungry? And the intent might be something like dog hungry. It's like a computer readable term that like, you'll understand. So in this example here, I called it hello world. And then once you create it, you give Alexa, like, some examples of what someone would say when they mean that. And I said, say hello here. Um, and Alexa's kind of, it's like fuzzy matching. It's supposed to be smart, uh, where you can say, like, some variation of something that's like that, and it should work. Um, you can also have a slot, and a slot is like a variable. So, like, in my example, um, of the gallery skill I'm building, where the user is walking through a gallery um, virtually, I have uh, go forward, go backward, go right, go left, where the second word is variable, and that gets passed to my API, and I can like conditionally, you know, send different responses based on what they tell me. Any questions so far? We're almost there, I promise. So. After you do that, there's another slide. It's the, so the, the last screen I showed you is like a GUI to do that. But it always is going to create this JSON blob that you can access from the JSON editor option. 
And this is very helpful for like, I have my local skill that I'm working on and I have my production skill. And you don't have to like update through the GUI every time you add a new intent. You can just copy this blob back and forth. Fair warning. The invocation name is in this blob. So if you copy your local development invocation name, be careful you don't overwrite your production invocation name and have lots of problems. Once you do that, you're going to hit the Save Model button up at the top and then the Build Model button. And you have to do that every time you make changes. And then once you have done that, you can head over to the test tab. And what test is, is it gives you like a virtualization uh, environment for uh, an Alexa device where um, by do all you have to do is you just hit that checkbox up, or, or I'm sorry, that drop down menu up at the top development. And um, that will enable it. And what you can do is you can hold down the microphone and you can ask it just like you would if you were using an Alexa device, or you can type in your requests. And if you work in a co-working space where you don't want to be like open and skill, blah, 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 like every couple minutes or an office, like it is really nice to do use this tool. Um, it's also nice because if you, you recall using your own Alexa device, if you stop talking to it, then Alexa will stop, is supposed to stop listening to you and it will turn off. But you can keep this open and it never will close your skill. So that's good for like when you're working back and forth, this is ideal. However, I strongly recommend if you are interested in developing an Alexa skill that you actually get one because then you'll get a real feel for like what words it's going to recognize and if a phrase sounds natural and also like how it sounds when it reads it like it back to you it's like this is not really a great substitute for the real thing so what is happening on the other side of the equation is in our terminal where we had run npm start um, the orange blob is what alexa is sending to your computer and the blue blob down at the bottom is what your computer is sending to Alexa. Pretty cool. And that is Hello World. So I thought that together we could live code an example of a, um, we can add, add an actual intent to it. So right now, if you say hello, I believe it does not do anything. You guys hear me okay? All right. So if I go here and I'm go to edit, and I have that intent, and if I go to test, and also, all right, I'm sure I'm in my plugin. I'm going to do npm. Start. That runs my proxy. So if I type open hello word camp, sent the request, and I don't have any audio, but it said hello word camp 2019. But now if I say say hello, it won't do anything because I haven't programmed it to do anything. And you can see it's not even saying anything. So what you want to do is I'm going to go through more of what's in this plugin. I showed you what the constructor function was already. Um, so this is the root that we called. And then this, and what it does is it will then run the scale function once that loop is hit. So in scale, all this stuff is kind of boilerplate, like making sure like this, the request is coming from the skill with the right ID. Um, and then it gets a request and a response. Um, and so then what we do here is we run this function, request response, and 
Um, I already have hello WordCamp Phoenix 2019. Goodbye WordCamp Phoenix 2019. I can change it right now, like, and it will automatically update. So if I do open hello WordCamp, now the danger is that this is going, it's getting proxied through my tethered phone. So it might not always work. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reload so I get a fresh session. So now open hello Word. Camp. Then we get the response CI automatically update. So um, I'm going to go back to the nice that did say hello, which was that intent that we created, but then we never finished. Um, and it doesn't do anything. And you can see here, I want to make this bigger. It sent a request of the type intent request, and the intent name is hello world. And my skill didn't have any logic of how to handle that, so it didn't do anything. But what we can do here is I can say if, I'm gonna just type it, the request is an instance of Alexa request intent request. Live coding is dangerous, so I have this on the side here. I think I'm just gonna paste I'm gonna walk through what this is. So the request is intent request, which I know I got grabbed from this type right here. And intent equals the request intent name. So it's intent and then the name is hello world. And then you can just have a big switch statement that says like handle this request this way, handle this request this way. Um, so in the case of hello world, um, and I also included the default just in case I've created an intent and didn't match it. Um, the response object, you send the, use the method respond, and then you can just write a text. Like a string, so this is coming out of my plugin. It should say now. I hit save, I go back here, and I'm gonna reload, not because you have to, but because I'm a little worried about this internet connection. Open, hello, WordCamp. And it should say something like CA automatically update, auto magically update. And then I'm gonna say say hello. And this is coming out of my plugin. Any questions? That was what I had for you. <laughs> this is like, I really wanted to let you know that um, it really is once you configure all of these things, um, it really is very easy to develop an Alexa skill this way. It might not be the most straightforward way as opposed to like using like Node or JavaScript, but if you have a big WordPress site with you know all your different configurations of what you want to do, like it, you can make this be a plugin that sits with any other plugin, and it has all of the power of the WordPress API, so you can like query posts, query settings, and it's a really cool kind of interface, like um, making this gallery skill, like the editors are like editing their scripts for what they say at different gallery stops right in WordPress. It's very cool. Anyone have a cool skill idea? Any questions at all? <laughs> yes. What do you mean, the voice WP plugin? What I was just working on. So this is what is available to you um, as part of the voice WP plugin. Um, and I kind of glossed over it up here, but you create a voice WP instance um, right here on line 72. And then um, you're able to take from the uh, the request um, 
next to the um, the rest endpoint um, right here. Um, Voice WP then wraps in with all of the methods so that you can send the responses the way that Alexa wants it. What's your question? Yes, Allie has developed a couple of Alexa skills. We did one for People Magazine. Um, we've done a couple small ones, and I'm working on the one that I was talking about with Cooper Hewitt, Smithsonian Design Museum, but it's not published yet. Yeah. So when someone uses the skill, they're using their Echo Dot, and they're not using a computer at all. Is, is, am I getting your question? Like, so you don't need to use the Echo Dot in, or an Echo or any or an Echo Show to develop it exactly, but you could um, because the cool thing is that you have your account is associated with your device. So once you start developing it and you register it all in Amazon, then it's already available on your device as a developer. Yes. Do you have a password for it that would be different for every device? You don't have to proxy it. So it's like, yes. But I mean, the proxy, as you can see, gives you all the information about what um, is going back and forth between the servers. Yes. How would you do that for the Echo Show and how would that work? How would Yeah, and so Voice WP does have like some default fields out of the box. That's like that you could have a skill that's like um, like a blog reader, like read me my last five posts, or um, can you read me like the third of the fifth posts? And uh, it doesn't, but that would be pretty cool. Now, what you would have to do if you wanted to do something like to manage your site via Alexa is you would have to, um, in Amazon, you have the, um, you can create a skill that requires like permissions where like the user would have to link their Amazon account with an account on your WordPress site so that like anyone couldn't just go and like delete comments on your site. Yeah. So is there a way to talk target any particular piece of content within a page, like a block for Gutenberg? You mean like that Alexa would only respond with a particular? So the way I would think about doing that would be um, if you like you'd query for the posts and then you'd query for that particular content within the post, just like you would if you were like writing a template to display it. But then um, you'd have the rest endpoint here and it would read that back as a response. So there, um, I don't believe that Siri has like a, an app development environment like this. Um, though if it does, and anyone knows about it, please correct me. I know that Google Home allows you to create a Google Home Assistant, and you can ask for a Google Home Assistant. And Voice WP only works with Alexa right now, but um, that might be something that uh, they'll develop in the future.
Right, right. Not really any standards anymore. You had a question all the way in the back. You could. Now, um, I am at my last minute, but come talk to me later, and I will. I can point you in the right direction. All right. Thank you very much.